What is going on guys, it's Muddy Dwarf here, welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to fully set up the PS5 jailbreak from start to finish. Now if things are a little bit more complicated than on the PS4, as this is basically a two-stage exploit that takes advantage of a partial jailbreak, combined with something that turns it into more of a full jailbreak with the lib hijacker, which is allowing us to do things now like 60 FPS patches, developer menus, we'll eventually be able to do cheats, trainers, mod tools, remote debugging software, and we even have things like homebrew applications and the ability to run our backup games, our game dumps, coming soon as well. So all of that stuff is being worked on. So the idea behind this video is to show you guys how to get your PS5 set up to that point where you'll be able to easily run all of the new stuff that is coming out at the moment. That is the general idea. Now, there's kind of two ways to load this exploit. You can either use a Blu-ray disc, a modified Blu-ray disc, or the web browser. Now, we're going to be focusing on the web browser method because that's going to be more generally accessible to most people watching this, since not everybody has a Blu-ray writer on their computers these days. So, of course, we're going to be focusing on the web browser method. Now, one of the issues with using the web browser is the fact that we don't have a dedicated web browser app on the PS5, as you can see here, unlike the PS4. So what we need to do is when we're initially loading the exploit for the first time, we're going to have to use the user guide instead, which is going to make it a little bit more complicated to load the jailbreak from the user guide. But once we enable the exploit just once, we'll then be able to install a dedicated web browser app on our PS5 so that we can load the exploit in future, just like on the PS4 with the web browser app. So we only need to use the user guide method for the initial loading of the exploit. So what we want to do from here is go down to system, go to system software and console information. And you want to check what your system software version is. That's your firmware version. So you can see mine says 21.02 and then there's a dash. So the number after the dash is your firmware version. So you can see mine says 04.03. That means I'm on firmware 4.03. So you can do this jailbreak if you're on any firmware from firmware 3.0 up to 4.51. So 03.00 to 04.51. If you have any firmware within that range, you will be able to do this jailbreak. If you have an older firmware, like a 01 or 02 firmware, then you will not be able to do this unless you update to one of these compatible firmwares with a USB drive. Although that's still technically not recommended since you know there might be some you know full jailbreak that comes out for those older firmwares in future. So it's not re really recommended to update. And of course, if you've gone higher than 4.51, if you're on say 05, 06, 07, then you're not going to be able to do this jailbreak. So make sure you have a compatible firmware before you get started. Also check your PS5's IP address. You can see mine is 192.168.137.219. Take a mental note of that IP address or note it down somewhere. Then we're going to go down to system software update and settings. And you want to make sure download update files automatically and install update files automatically are both unchecked. Otherwise, your PS5 is going to keep trying to download the latest firmware update, the latest system software from Sony servers, and it's going to try and install it automatically. So make sure those are both unchecked so it doesn't do that. Also check your downloads just now and make sure there's not a system software update that's already being downloaded or currently downloaded. If there is, make sure you go to your downloads and cancel and delete that system software update. So make sure you don't have any system software updates pending and you should be good to go. So from here, we're then gonna head over to our network settings. We're gonna go down to settings, set up an internet connection, press the options button on your registered network. Doesn't matter if it's a Wi-Fi network or a wired network. And then we're gonna go to advanced settings and we're gonna scroll down to DNS settings. And we're gonna change this over to manual. And you want to enter one of these two IP addresses as your primary DNS either 192.241.221.79 or you can use 165.227.83.145. So either one of those two IP addresses should work and click OK and let it get connected up to the network. Now one of the side effects of this DNS address is that it will also block connections to Sony servers, which means if we go back over to system software console information, you can see the message that said update available has now disappeared. So it's blocking connections to Sony servers. So it will also stop you from accidentally installing the latest system software updates. So that's an extra level of protection that's built in there. And if we head over to the user guide page, 
At the moment, it's still loading the normal user guide. So what I would recommend doing is log out of your profile and log back in. This seems to be the, the best way to kind of refresh the browser because clearing cookies and website data doesn't actually refresh it properly. So signing out and signing back in. And if we go back into settings and go back to the user guide, it should load us and redirect us over to this website. That's what the DNS addresses do. Now, if this doesn't load, I will show you an alternative method because there are some instances where those custom DNS addresses will not work for you. So don't worry if you get some kind of error or you're not able to load this page because I will show you an alternative method. So from here, if you can get onto this page, press the left trigger twice or L2 twice, and that will take you over to the URL redirector. From here, you can go to an exploit site like es7in1.site which I will leave linked in the video description. This is Echo Stretch's 7-in-1 host. If you head over to PS5, you will get the PS5 exploits. And what you want to do is run Spectre's exploit right here. Now, what happens if you're not able to access that web page with the custom DNS addresses? Well, unfortunately, there are instances where your ISP will actually block those specific DNS addresses, or they just will not allow you to use custom DNS addresses in the first place, and they'll just force you to use their DNS so you'll get some kind of error when you try and go on the user guide, like the internet's not working, that kind of thing. So what you need to do in that situation is take the DNS addresses off. So go back to settings, set up an internet connection, press options, go to advanced settings, go to your DNS settings and change it back to automatic and click OK and let it get reconnected back up to the network. From there, head back to the user guide and make sure you log out and log back in again to refresh it and it'll eventually take you back here to the normal user guide page. So from here, what we want to do is navigate outside of this page by clicking through a bunch of links to get onto Google. And then from Google search, we can then search for the exploit site and access it that way. So to do this, I'm gonna head down to playstation.com system software in the user guide. This will take me over here and there should be a YouTube video down here so I can click on the YouTube link down here and that should take me over to YouTube and it'll be much easier to get to Google search from YouTube. Um, so if we go to reject all and we'll just pause this uh, YouTube video that's playing. And then if we head up to sign in, we get to Google sign in. And then from here, I can go to privacy or terms. If I click one of those links, it'll take me here. And then I can click on Google up here in the top left hand corner. And then if I scroll down to the bottom, there is a Google link down here that I can click on and that will take me to Google search. So from Google search, we can then search for our exploit site. So es7in1.site. Uh, Don't know why it never puts the dot in there, but there we go, dot site. So es7in1.site, and then we can click on it up here and that will get us onto the site as well. So this is another way of accessing the site and we can now load Spectre's exploit. So that is basically what you're going to have to do if you're not able to use the custom DNS addresses. And I'll have other links in the description, of course, if this website ever goes down to another website that's hosting the exploits. So you can always use that one in the description if this one is down for whatever reason. But anyway, we're going to head over and load Spectre's exploit now. So quite often you'll run into this error message. It's not really a problem. Just click OK and it will refresh and try again. And there we go. So it may give you that message a few times, but eventually you'll get onto this screen where we can click OK and it will start running the exploit. So there we go. We can see it is loading. We got arbitrary kernel read write established and there it goes. It now says debug settings are enabled and launching elf loader on port 9020. That means the first stage of this two stage exploit has been loaded successfully. So we are good to go. Now, obviously it might not go quite as smoothly for you when you first load this. For example, you might get a crash where your whole console just turns off. Or for example, you might get some kind of error message that says something failed to load or failed, or you might get a jailbreak failed message or some other notification. Any kind of error message, if it does not take you all the way down to enabled debug settings, then unfortunately you'll have to restart your PS5 and just try and load it again. And keep doing that until it eventually loads successfully, as you can see it has done right here. So from here, we're going to switch on over to our computer to get the second stage of the exploit up and running. So if we switch over to the computer, we need to download the internet browser application from Sven GDK, which I will leave linked down in the video description. So open up a USB drive and copy the internet browser package 
to the root of the USB. Also right click on the USB and go to properties and make sure it's using the XFAT or FAT32 file system. So it needs to be either XFAT or FAT32, which USB drives normally are, but just double check, make sure it's not NTFS or something that's not compatible with the PS5. So from here, we can go ahead and eject our USB drive and plug it into the PS5. Okay, so we also want to download the Lib Hijacker. This one is from Illusion. And this particular one will load the 60 FPS patches and the developer menus. But obviously there will be other versions of the Lib Hijacker which will do other things like load cheats, trainers, mod tools and homebrew apps and maybe our game dumps in future as well. But anyway, for now we have access to this one. So that's the one I'm downloading. So once you've got that downloaded, we also want Python. You can either download Python version 3 from python.org and install it or you can get it from the Microsoft Store, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so we extract the lib hijacker into the folder and then we go into this folder and we right click and we open in terminal or if you're on Windows 10, you can click up here in the file path and type in cmd space before the path and then enter and that will open up a command prompt window in the same location. So from here, what we want to do is first of all get Python by typing in Python and that will open up the Microsoft Store if you don't already have Python installed. So I'll tell it to get and install Python version 3.11. I mean, you could probably just use the latest version of Python, even if it's higher. But uh, there we go. So that should be Python installed. So once Python's installed, we can type in Python again. And you can see it's now running. So if I type in exit, open and close brackets to exit we know that we have Python up and running. So from here, we need to use the pip installer to install a required dependency. So we do pip install AIO files and let that install, successfully installed AIO files. Okay, so from here, we can now run the script. So the script is going to be the word Python. Now, depending on how you installed Python, if you're using the Python launcher, instead of Python, it might be Python 3, or it might be PY. So in my case, because I installed it with the Microsoft Store and I don't have any other versions of Python installed, it's just Python. So Python and then send underscore elf dot PY, which is the script name, and then the IP address of our PS5, which for me was 137.219, I believe. And then all we have to do is hit enter and it will start trying to run the lib hijacker. So we press enter here, there it goes, it says start. Okay, so in my case, you can see here it says failed to spawn a new Redis server process, which unfortunately means it failed to load the second stage of the exploit, which means in order to load this again, we are going to have to restart the PS5 and try again. But before we do that, let's install our web browser application. So if we head back out here to our settings, you can see the debug settings are not here. But if we exit out of the settings and go back into the settings again, we now have the debug settings enabled. So we can go into debug settings, game, we can go to package installer, and we can now install the web browser package that's on our USB drive. So we're gonna select that package file and let it install. So if you run into an error message while trying to install that package, maybe try one of the other exploits in the host, in the seven in one host, like the Zekoshal host, or one of the other ones that I may put down in the video description. So now we have this dedicated web browser shortcut that we can use in future to load the browser. So now I'm just going to restart my PS5 to try and load the lib hijacker again. Okay, so I've restarted the PS5. So now I'm going to launch the web browser app instead of the user guide and it will take us to Lethal's site, which basically acts as a web browser. So from here, we can go to any website we want. So we can go back to es7in1.site. And if we head over to that website, we can load the exploit. And another addition to this as well is that whenever I exit out of the browser and go back into it, my previously loaded website will be in the history. So I can add this to my favorites. So now this website will always be accessible in my favorites. So I don't have to type it in every single time. So I can quickly access the exploit. So we'll load the exploit again and hopefully we'll be able to get it up and running this time. Okay, so stage one was loaded successfully, launching ELF Loader on port 9020. So we'll switch back over to our computer and send the script again. So it says start, and there it goes. We switch back over to the PS5, we get this notification when it works successfully. So 
that worked successfully. It says Lib Hijacker is running and we are up and running. And if we switch back over to our computer again, you can see it's now loading the kernel log on the PS5. Another thing that's also running is an FTP server that starts running when you load the Lib Hijacker. So I can open up an FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP, or you can do FTP from within the Windows um, File Explorer itself. But if we type in the IP address of our PS5 once more into the uh, host box and then put in 1337 as the port number and then quick connect, you can see it successfully connects us to the PS5's hard drive. So you can access the file system of your PS5 remotely from FTP. That is one feature. And of course, we can now load the 60 FPS patches if I load up Bloodborne, which is one of the games that is supported. Also important to note here, this update later, update now message, you will get this if you don't have the custom DNS addresses we added into the network settings because those addresses block this from happening. So definitely recommended to have those DNS addresses to stop you getting these messages telling you to update. But obviously, if you can't use the DNS addresses, then you will get these messages. So just make sure you always say update later and not update now. And the same thing goes for when you're shutting down the PS5, because sometimes when you shut down the PS5, it will say, do you want to shut down an update or just shut down? Always just tell it to shut down. So just be aware of these messages when you launch apps and shut down your PS5 especially if you don't have those DNS addresses on there. I also have another tutorial that shows you guys other ways of blocking the system updates to avoid getting these messages. So I'll leave that one linked down below as well. So we're going to say update later. And there it goes. You can see it has patched Bloodborne with the 60 FPS patch. And you'll see it shows up there in the bottom right hand corner. 60 FPS patch made by Lance McDonald. Now this exploit is a tethered exploit, which means we do have to run the jailbreak every time we reboot the PS5. But because we have the web browser app now installed, it's much, much easier to get up and running with the exploit. Now you don't have to restart the PS5 if you want to load another project that uses the lib hijacker when you're already running it. So for example, we're still running these 60 FPS patches right now, but if I want to run something else that uses the lib hijacker, I can just switch over to my computer here and then if we go into this other version of the lib hijacker, this is a dumper version, but it has all of the same scripts. And one of the scripts is the kill daemon script, and that will kill the currently running uh, lib hijacker. So if we open this in terminal and we just enter the same command, but we change it to the kill daemon script instead. So if we do that, enter that script name, press enter, it will kill it. So you can see now it has ended. And then from there, we can basically run the script again, the send elf script for this one, for the dumper version, and that will get that up and running. And there it goes, that's now running. And then for this particular version, it requires me to use another script, the launch script, to tell it when to start dumping the app. Once I'm actually on the game, I'm already on the game, so all I need to do here is basically enter the same command, but change it to the launch script instead. And then you'll see as soon as I press enter on here, we switch over to the PS5, I'll press enter. And you can see we get the message popping up saying it's dumping the executable. So that's just a quick example of how you can, you know, load other projects that use the lib hijacker without having to restart your PS5. So that is basically it. That's how you get the whole PS5 jailbreak set up and running. Now, when you restart your PS5, you can load the exploit again much quicker with the web browser there and then you'll get the debug settings enabled so you can install package files. You can then send the lib hijacker different versions to load 60 FPS patches, cheats, trainers, mod tools, load your game dumps in future as well. Once all that stuff comes out, you also have access to FTP so you can access the hard drive and uh, yeah, it's all up and running, ready to go. So obviously there are going to be new projects coming out soon with the lib hijacker. I'll be covering that on the channel and this tutorial is going to be the first episode in a playlist of tutorials that will be linked in the video description. Please check back on that playlist as new stuff comes out. I will be updating the playlist with additional tutorials for everything that comes out in future. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.